Hello dear tarot friends, it's Jennifer with Bohemian Rose Tarot here again today. Thank you for joining me. Um, I have a very special deck that to talk about today that comes with a beautiful story that I'm going to share in a minute. But um, yeah, it's been a crazy busy week. I know my channel's been a little quiet. Uh, I added a second shop that I'm reading at now. I'm reading at Sonoran Magic down in Green Valley, Suarita area. I think the address is Green Valley technically. Um, beautiful little shop out there on La Cañada and it's, uh, Melina, you are such a joy to work with. Thank you so much uh, for that. And then, yeah, I've been uh, working at Libra and Thorn a lot as well. And so I have a few events coming up tomorrow if you're local. Friday the 13th at Sonoran Magic, I'm doing um, charm casting bracelets where we cast charms and then you pick your five and I read them and then you get a charm bracelet that I make as you, uh, for you to take with you. And then on Saturday, um, I'm teaching Don't Be Afraid of the Upside Down Tarot Reversals class at Libra and Thorn. There are just two or three spots left, I think, for that one. So if you're interested, go to those websites. I'll link those below. Um, but yeah, it's been really, really busy. Kind of a bummer thing, too. My um, Somehow, and I don't know how, my mandolin kind of leapt off this wall over here and the headstock broke. And I'm devastated. I think devastated isn't strong enough word because uh, I really love that instrument. It's not playable right now, so if anyone knows a luthier in Tucson or even in Phoenix, have mandolin, will travel, um, please let me know. It's mostly aesthetic, like the, the headstock part where the strings are, are is fine. It's the beautiful scroll work on the headstock that broke cleanly off when it fell off the wall. I still don't know how that happened, so um, really sad about that. but. Overall, this has been an amazing week and a really, really slammed week. Um, coming up, I've got a I'm leading a book group on the witch, the book, the witch's the witch's wound um, at Libra and Thorn coming up um, next Thursday, third Thursday book club and a whole bunch of other things coming up. <laughs> September and October are slammed, so uh, I might have. Long story short, I might have fewer videos up than usual for now, just because this is the busy season, as we say. So, long rambling intro, let's talk about the deck, the story behind the deck. Um, Melissa, thank you, first of all, so much. I am so grateful. Uh, I ordered this deck six months ago or so, maybe more, from my creator. And there was only one left and, you know, I ordered it from her Etsy, paid, whatever, and got a message back the next day saying, I'm so sorry. The deck sold to two people at the same time. The person who um, bought it before you bought it right before you, so they're getting the deck and I'm so sorry that I oversold it. Here's your refund. And so I'm like, well, you know, cool. When are, when are you going to reprint? She's like, I don't know. I'm working on it, so it'll come out. No, no shade on Dame Darcy. I love her. I think her decks are awesome. So... Anyway, it's still, as far as I know, out of print, um, and so I was like, well, I guess it wasn't meant to be. I guess I'm just never going to get that deck. Well, my dear friend Melissa, the owner of Libra and Thorn, uh, was perusing a tarot trade post and noticed that uh, someone was willing to trade this deck for one that she had. And so she traded for me, and now I am the proud owner of the mermaid tarot and I'm thrilled is not I don't think a strong enough word I am thrilled because I really you know when you want a watery deck you just want a watery deck right and um, I recently got the tempest tarot instead because I knew I couldn't get this and that is such a cool deck but it's very different vibe than this one so let's go tabletop shall we and we're gonna talk about um, Dame Darcy's mermaid tarot such a cool fun deck all right, so here we go. Um, just a heads up, if you are trading decks or sending decks, please wrap them in a box. This is, I'm sure it was just someone didn't know. They put it in a bubble mailer and thought it would be okay. And now there's a lot of damage to the box that wasn't there. The cards are just fine. But just a heads up, if you're gonna, a bubble mailer isn't safe enough for a deck. So please be sure. Um, 
that you, you know, you just wrap it in bubble wrap and put it in a box and then put it in a mailer maybe. But again, no shade. If you don't know, you don't know. And uh, you never know how UPS is, or USPS, I should say, are going to handle um, your packages. Sometimes they get a little rough with them. So, but you, really minimal damage. I'm not worried about it at all. Um, nice magnetic box. There's the inside and the beautiful backs. Um, and then here's the, the little card that, that comes with it and her cover card. The edges are this, the camera isn't showing this very well. The, the color is a beautiful peach. It's, it almost looks the same as the, um, Tarot of Oneness edges. If that makes sense, this looks very orange on camera. It's much more peach than orange. Okay, and again, I, I think the backs are so pretty. So here we go. I love a fool. And I love this drawing style. It's just fun. It's It feels very tattoo art to me as well. So there's the fool. There's our lovely magician. Our high priestess. The Empress, the Emperor. I love how he's holding someone's hand here, a woman's hand, a mermaid's hand, I'm thinking. Hierophant. And I love that that's a statue underwater. I think that's really clever. The Lovers. I just noticed, I didn't realize she signed, signed each card. I didn't, I didn't realize that. So... There's the chariot, strength, the hermit. I love the sunset in the background. Wheel of Fortune, justice, the hanged man, soldier. Death, this is a really powerful death. Deb is riding a seahorse here and we've got a a poor, a poor sailor at the bottom of the sea. Um, temperance. She's pouring water between two shells. Lovely. The devil. It's funny, it's almost like the devil is sweating. The tower. A beautiful tower with the big wave. The star. Interesting that her ear is almost elfish here in the star. The moon. Terrific moon with the octopus tentacles. I think that's great. The sun. Judgment. And I'm sorry if this is if this is a deck you're really looking for. Um, I think it is. I will double check if it if it's available. I'll link it in the description box below. But I think it's still out of print. I think she's planning on putting it back in print, but right now it's not. Two of Cups, the Three of Cups, the Four. Like this is just such a fun a fun deck. The um, cardstock is feels very heavily laminated. Um, which I think is typical of uh, Dame Darcy's decks. So we'll give it a shuffle and we'll we'll try a reading here. Eight of Cups. Nine. I haven't even had I've I've had time to go through it, um, and that's about it. I love that the fish is in the cup and then there's a whale. In the back, or is that a mermaid? We're not sure, right? Knight of Cups, riding a seahorse. The Queen of Cups with the fairy wings is lovely. It's so interesting. She has fairy wings and a tail. The King of Cups. The Porpoise. The Ace of Wands, or Oars. So I thought, oh, I thought they were all oars. They're not. Okay. Oh, interesting on her, um, on the minors, some of them are just DD and some of them are her full name when she signs it. The Four of Wands. Prepare. 
opposing marriage there to the mermaid. The five of wands. I love the oars. They're all fighting with the oars. The six. <laughs> the seven, her eyes. This one makes me laugh every time I see it. It's just, it's so funny. She's like, oh no, choices. <laughs> the eight of wands with all the oars flying through the air. Nine of wands. I love this. He's caught in seaweed and, and holding boundaries with seaweed. Ten of wands. I like her she's really sassy the queen of wands this king of wands I think I think this is my favorite card in the whole deck I think it's just beautiful ace of swords their tridents two of swords the three I like all the eyes and the three of swords Interesting that there are four, um, four of swords. <laughs> He's definitely resting, I suppose. Um, five, perhaps some. Um, oh my gosh, the word just escaped my my brain. What was it called when when someone would like kidnap you to be on the ship? What is that called? Oh, it'll come to me, of course, as soon as I stop my video. Six of Swords. Seven. Eight. The Nine of Swords. That's beautiful, too. And the Ten. The Page. A very dapper page. <laughs> the knight riding a shark this time. That's pretty funny. The queen. Ah, oh, there we have the widow queen with the queen of swords. And the king. I'm surprised she didn't pick Poseidon for the king of swords or the emperor. Maybe the emperor is and I missed it. Um, Ace of Pentacles, but maybe that would be two on the nose. Two, three of Pentacles. The four. The five. Oh, out in the snow. The six. The seven. Treasure chest. The eight. The nine, the ten, the page, the knight, and the queen, lovely queen, and the king. All right, so yeah, I was talking to my friends um, and about the Tempest Tarot and the, I'll go through the Tempest Tarot someday if I haven't yet. I think I did though. Um, and I feel like that's my Pirates of the Caribbean deck. Like I ordered it after I figured I couldn't ever get this one. And that's kind of my Pirates of the Caribbean deck. And then this one, I don't know. This one, I haven't decided where it kind of fits yet. Um, let's see how it shuffles. I'm going to guess it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty stiff. So this, this cardstock doesn't really like to riffle shuffle, but that's okay. We'll try one more time. It's okay. Like, I think it'll loosen up as I, as I work with it. Um, but for now, this might be one of those waterfall shufflers, right? Let's see if that works better. Oops. Maybe a little. They don't, you know, they're not sticky, really. They don't, as, as laminated as they feel, they don't really clump terribly. Um, it'll fan pretty well. You know, it fans pretty well. So, yeah, it's, um, it's a fun little deck, and I'm thrilled to have it. And again, I never really thought I'd get it, because I just thought, well, I'm not meant to have it, right, when, when that happens. So, 
Um, I love it when a deck finds your way to you in unexpected ways, right? And this one, um, again, thank you so much, Melissa. I'm really thrilled to have it. Let's see what we got here. We'll do a little, um, how about we do, I call it the Lisa Pepez, uh layout or spread. It's energy obstacle advice, I think. So let's give that a try. So we're going to pull one from the top for energy. Page of Cups, one from the bottom for obstacle. Four of Cups, and one for the top for advice. Oh, the world. That's lovely. Okay, so energy, Page of Cups. Um, lots. So I see pages as messengers. I see the Page of Cups as a messenger of love or a messenger of something emotionally fulfilling. It's also kind of I feel like the the pages all hold the ace of their suit, so he's holding this ace and wondering what to do with it, right? So some kind of new beginning or message or um, some, some kind of something that's going to fill my cup or maybe even um, a young person who's um, going to come into my world to help me fill my cup or learn something new about my emotional self. However, usually just for me, my intention when a court card comes on the table um, it's usually the energy of the querent for me first, and then the second court card is um, someone else or other energy. Okay, so Page of Cups, someone who is um, kind of bright-eyed and innocent with lots of love to give in their heart and lots of wonder and curiosity. So that's the Page of Cups. And then, and I, I do feel that I'm in a Page of Cups moment in my life right now. And then, um, so energy, obstacle, Four of Cups. So what ace am I missing? It's interesting that here's an ace in the Four of Cups. She's got her four shells here and she's looking at this kind of with a side eye. Usually in the Four of Cups, they're not looking at the cup at all. They're kind of looking here and not seeing the opportunity. Here she's actually seeing the opportunity and giving it a side eye. <laughs> so that's the obstacle. I need to not miss my, my cup. I need to not miss the ace that's being offered here through the Page of Cups and through the Four of Cups. And then the world, the outcome, that's a beautiful outcome. Um, a new uh, step through the portal of learning something or, or experiencing something and then into something new. So the completion of a cycle. Um, so I think if I, if I pick up this cup, then I'll be leveling up, so to speak. If this reading resonates for you, please take it as well. But that's how I'm kind of kind of reading this here and I'm really enjoying this this deck so much and I I'm so grateful for how it came into my life um and again it's the Dame Darcy Mermaid Tarot um this one is is this the 2018 this is this the first edition maybe let's see if it's dated on any of the other cards the box is dated 2018 so um so yeah, that's that's exciting. So I'm sure that's when she created the deck. I don't know if this is a first edition or not, but I'm thrilled, thrilled, thrilled to have it. And so, so, so grateful um, because when I'm in my fields and in that watery space, <laughs> I think this deck is going to be a really great reader for me. So thank you so much for spending a little time with me. This is Jennifer with Bohemian Rose Tarot. I will see you next time. Take care now.